black um, Christian who was a protester who he wanted the black people to be the same as white people. The little black boys and black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls as sisters and brothers. I have a dream today. I think we've come a long way since then, and I think it's all good. We may have some setbacks every now and again, but it's, it's coming a long way. You know, as far as housing, as far as jobs, I don't think that exists. You know, I don't think that's hand in hand. No, we are not satisfied, and we will not be satisfied until justice rolls down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. I think he'd be happy with where we are, but I think he'd have a great speech about where we need to go, too. Uh, I think we've got a long ways to go, but we've certainly come a long ways. When all of God's children, black, black men, men and white men, men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last. This is my gig, and in the NFL, as far as I know, there's only one of me out there. Take a lesson from Seahawk Ultra fan Neil Hart, otherwise known as Kilt Man. I had to do something different. Before you get to the game, you have to get into the game. It's like Gene Simmons and Alice Cooper. It's all part of the gig. Neil wears his pride on his face, and under his kilt, well... Nothing's worn under the kilt. Everything's in perfect working condition just like his custom 72 Beetle. Oh yeah, this is four cylinders of Seahawks power. Parking at the stadium's almost completely taken up by season ticket holders. So by car, Hiltman says, get to the Soto neighborhood early on game days. And all this parking is yours. But that's far from his only option. Kilt Man has taken a ferry here. He knows all about Metro's 10 transit routes and seven park and ride buses to the stadium. He sees Tacoma using the game day sounder, and he's working to railroad even more far off fans. Portland, right on, come take the Amtrak up, man. Right on, man. Yeah. But is the Kilt Man's commute, well, naturally air conditioned? Oh my God. <laughs> Go Hawks. You gotta be a tough fan, you gotta be a Seahawk fan. So when it's Um I think it's very cool because I'm totally down with people being loony. <laughs> what do you got on under your kilt? Wow, folks, that's a wild salmon. Wild or not, the kilt man and his Seahawker friends are dedicated to getting fans to a game however they can, to share in some diehard spirit. One of the reasons why I'm a diehard is because I care about other fans. And I want everybody to have a good time. Go hard, hard. So the best way to stay on the ball when it comes to getting to the new Seahawks stadium is to know all of your options beforehand. That way you won't get caught with your pants down or your kilt a little too high up in the air. In Seattle, I'm Brian Callinan for Q13 News. Do you guys sell boxers? Imagine you're miles from home. Somehow you've lost track of family, friends. You can't even hear your mother calling. You're four years old. You're lost. Yay! Well, that's exactly what some people say happened to the orca nicknamed Luna. L98 to scientists, a lovable nuisance to folks here in his adopted home, Gold River, British Columbia. Locals know him. Are you kidding? If you're not bending over and petting him or doing what you want, he kind of comes around your boat and flips water up. He's like a typical three-year-old child. One time he just he went around the back of this boat and just splashed all the way around. I'm standing in the back, soaking wet, and then he swam away because I chase people away. Yeah, everybody here in Gold River has their Luna story, and whale advocates say that's the problem. Locals say Luna's gotten extremely friendly lately drawing crowds and now more security and warnings from the government to keep your distance. Whales, like any mammal, are born with the capacity to learn. But without the context of the social group, it doesn't learn the things that a whale needs to do to be an adult. Luna really is just a kid. He's a, 
uh, almost four years old at this point. Uh, he's uh, healthy so far as uh, one can tell from a physical point of view, uh, but he's a social creature and he's desperately lonely, I think. So his problem is that uh, he's seeking company through humans. And just look how curious he gets with a dog. This isn't natural. This isn't right. Um, it's upsetting. The problem is that Luna belongs with his family. Not so fast, say Canadian officials here in Vancouver, who are ultimately responsible for what happens with Luna. They say a plan to repatriate the whale with its family in the San Juan Islands does not come without its problems. We're very concerned that if Luna was brought down into the area, down San Juan or off Victoria, that he has more opportunity to interact with people in boats, which will become even more of a danger for him and the public. Just recently, the Canadians said they would not move the whale. Now they're reconsidering that decision in light of what they say is an increase in human-whale interactions. We wish people would just stay away from the whale and give him the best chance of remaining wild. In Vancouver, John Yeager, Q13 Fox News.